Yes, do you? You watching some porn back there or what? You know, there, there was an ad starting up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like porn music to me, man. And we're live, yes. There you go. Welcome to the live stream, everyone. As a guest, Danny Bossa. Welcome, Danny. Hey, Stephen, how are you? I'm fine. So um, let's start. We already have a bunch of questions in the chat box. We'll try to uh, answer as much as uh, possible. So uh, how we're going to do it is, uh, Danny, you want me to read them? You read the questions yourself? Um, well, right now there's just a couple, so I can look at the first one. Hey, Diamon. Uh, hey, guys, by the way, hope you're all doing well. <laughs> Uh, I haven't been doing too many videos these days because I've been really, really busy with work. Uh, and, but at least for this, I don't have to prepare anything, so it helps. Uh, from Globalismus, and I won't even try that second word. Hey, D, I'm on Sestadon 125 milligram once a week, and it's not helping me. For a day or two, I feel like a raging animal with a heart on. But after that, it all vanished. What may be the issue here? So... Right now, you're you're basically saying that you're taking one injection a week, and you're feeling different from the beginning of the week toward than towards the end of the week. So you're not feeling the same. If you're not feeling the same, it means the once a week injection is not a good idea for you. So you want to right now definitely try splitting up your dose into two weekly shots to see if you know if I inject on Monday and Thursday, do I feel a little bit more steady throughout the week? Uh, with Sustanon, chances are you will. I don't know what your SHBG is, but maybe your SHBG is extremely low, which means more frequent shots. And yes, Sustanon has a lot of long esters, but also has a lot of short esters too. So I would definitely suggest split that up into two weekly shots if you can. Um, and then if you feel a little bit more steady and you're not feeling you know, up at the beginning and down after, give that a few weeks as long as you're feeling steady. And then later on, you can try adjusting your, the weekly dose. So if you're feeling steady and still symptomatic, you can try bumping that up to maybe 150 a week or 175 a week or whatever your doctor wants to do. That would be my uh, my advice. Um, I should add that Sustan is pretty much all I can get legally. Sustan and Nibido, but Nibido always, yeah. Uh, stay away from Nibido. It's, it's not suited for TRT at all. We do not recommend it at all. Even Sustan on... There's a lot of guys on Sustanon having issues just because there's, like I said, there's short esters and there's long esters. So it's, you have some of the testosterone hits you right away and some that takes a couple of days and some that lasts long. So you're, you're just getting hit with testosterone and all these different intervals, if you will, versus something like Cipionate where you get it and it's just like this nice steady um, stream. So, uh, you know, if that's all you can get, it's all you can get, but definitely I'd try breaking that up. Um, Okay, Derek Anderson. I noticed I started and I noticed I started and week two and three. I felt amazing. After week three, I've noticed a decline back to just above baseline. What's the best way to approach your doc about adjusting dosing? So when you're starting testosterone replacement therapy, you're basically you have already some natural production, right? So you you got your labs done and maybe you had a total T of 200 or 300 or 400, whatever the hell it was and it was low, and now you're adding exogenous testosterone on top of that. So let's say you're taking, you know, even 100 milligrams a week. Well, now it's, you're adding that over and above your natural production. So you wind up with a lot more testosterone than you're used to, and your body after a while is going to say, whoa, like this is, this is great. But as we know, within, you know, a couple of weeks, months, maybe, you know, five weeks or so, your natural production is going to start to get suppressed, and it's going to go down, go down, go down. So then you're total levels are going to go down, go down, go down, go down. So it's, it's, if you're f feeling back to baseline, it means that your natural productions have now kind of tanked or are tanking. And it means that the dose that you're taking right now probably isn't sufficient. So you would want to go tell your doctor to say, Hey, we're going to have to increase because at the beginning of therapy, I was feeling good because it was what, whatever dose on top of the natural. But now that the natural is gone, the dose that I'm taking clearly is not sufficient. So you got to bring that up. Um, ABGH, hey Danny, how can I control my E2? 
because they're above 300 p mole and prolactin 2 and how to improve my HDL levels. Thank you. Doing test 80 milligrams a week and HCG 750 IU three times a week. Okay. So 300 p mole, that's 81 pgml for uh, everyone else that doesn't know about p mole. So 81 isn't really high. Uh, I know you think it's high because you're looking at the clinical range. I have no idea what your total is. You haven't really indicated it. Um, but right now your estrogen is probably high, not because of your testosterone dose, which is 80 milligrams a week, which is typically not enough, but you're taking 750 IU of HCG three times a week and 750 IU all at once is like a pretty hefty dose. HCG has a habit of spiking estradiol and you're taking that three times a week. So it's probably totally throwing your estradiol and testosterone ratio completely out of whack. Um, so not sure why you're taking that much HCG. Do you need like some major fertility? Are you trying to get your wife, girlfriend pregnant and it's not happening and your doctor's trying to get you some super sperm production? You know, uh, if that's the case, then I, I get it. Uh, but if that's not the case, I'd definitely back up on the, back off on the HCG and bring up the testosterone instead. You'd probably feel a hell of a lot better. Uh, we typically don't do anything to control estradiol if you're just taking testosterone but now you're taking hcg like i said that's gonna spike it and just completely throw things off um so the ratio between the two is going to just it's not going to really make sense um so on 80 milligram i mean like i said i don't know what your total and free and whatever else is but that's probably what the issue is again if you don't if you're not going after some kind of crazy fertility you, and then you just want to maintain um testicular function, you can probably back off that HCG to like even 250 IU, 300 IU, three times a week, even twice a week usually is sufficient and bring up the, the testosterone dose instead. Uh, Derek Anderson, thanks for putting this on. You're welcome. Um, Lexi Nutrition, why some people on tier two, their face age faster or they look older. Um, their facial skin become more saggy with more wrinkles. Is it because of high level DHT that affect the skin? Um, I wouldn't say it becomes more saggy with more wrinkles, but it does change. If I look at my face, uh, pictures and videos of me from just even two years ago compared to now, my face has changed. And why is that? I had a deficiency of androgens for probably most of my life. And now those I have very healthy levels of androgens. And androgens is what makes a man a man. Androgens is what gives you masculine characteristics, okay? So if I was lacking androgens, my face probably didn't develop those masculine characteristics, characteristics as much as it would have had I had a, enough. So now later on in life, I brought up the androgens, and lo and behold, my face has actually become more masculine. My, my jaw size has actually gotten bigger because I had a very, very small jaw, small chin. Um, I look less effeminate, if you will, compared to even just a couple of years ago. Like people that haven't seen me in a couple of years barely even recognize me. Yes, I shave my head and stuff like it's by the way, guys, I'm not bald. As you can see, I got hair. I just shave it because I like it. My wife likes it. Um, but yeah, people haven't seen me for a couple of years don't even recognize me uh, because my face has changed that much. Um, I haven't gotten more wrinkles and more saggy skin. On the contrary, uh, I mean, I am getting older. I'm, you know, I'm going to be 47 in February compared to when I started TRT. I was 41, so I'm going to have a little bit more wrinkles because that's what happens when you get older. Um, but I don't think it's it's the DHT. If anything, my skin has improved tremendously since getting on testosterone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. um, hi, everyone. Make sure, okay. DC Heavenly Bodies. Hello, you guys rock. Dr. Fox, would you please let us know your three days a week training routine? Yeah. You only train three days a week? I train three days a week, yeah. You bastard, you. Well, one, of those, one of those is legs completely, quads, glutes, calves. Uh, Holy cow. Yeah. And uh, the two other times, I train all the rest, all the upper body. So um, I divide my um, sets between uh, Tuesday and Friday there. Uh, I do shoulders, back, uh, vertical, pull, lateral pull. 
Um, yeah, nothing special. Nothing special. It, it doesn't matter so much what you do exactly. The compound movements first, and then I do the isolation movements. Uh, yeah, high intensity uh, still. Not too heavy, not to uh, have any injuries. So uh, no ego lifting. No one is watching anyway. I have a home yeah. gym. Yeah, just uh, 60 to 90 minutes uh, tops, and that's it. Just uh, enough to recover. Nothing hey, special. guys, a good, good point he was making about the weights. You know, when you when you have, like, I have a home gym, and he's got a home gym, but I find myself doing stuff where I'm using, like, baby weights, but I'm doing, like, super slow movement like i'll take like even like a 20 pound dumbbell and i'm standing up and i'm just bringing it up like really 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 slow and all the way down and it's just 20 pounds but it's like after a couple reps of that when you get about eight nine reps it's you're just totally pumped and it's it, like you don't need to use crazy weights if you're doing them a, a you know a, a certain way um just slow down the movement and stuff and you just get a really nasty pump just with like almost <laughs> Almost no uh, no weight. So, um, okay, SHBG benefits. What's the perfect range? There is no perfect range for for SHBG. Um, don't you don't want to try to alter SHBG? You don't want to really touch it. Um, when it's too low, there are there is a school of thought that says that um, it's, it can be an indicator of poor health. Um, you know, but and then when it's too high. It makes your protocol a little bit more complicated where you need like a really hefty dose of testosterone to have any symptom resolution, but there is no perfect range. Um, you know, if you're anywhere between, you know, 20 to 40 or so, you're in a situation where testosterone isn't going to be a difficult thing for you. The guys with much lower levels of HUG are, are much higher. Sometimes they, they need a little bit more work getting dialed in, um, but there's no perfect, there's no perfect range. Uh, Clint Granger or Granger, how long should a person wait after feeling better with TRT before trying out DECA or some other add-in? Um, how long should you wait? As long as it, as long as you've been on for a sufficient amount of time, where you say, you know, I I feel now the same week after week. I'm I'm always the same. There's no real change. I'm taking whatever my protocol is, and I've been the same, and there's no change. Uh, if you want to add one compound or one supplement or whatever it is, that would be the time. And then if something starts feeling off, well, then you'll know. If I stop this, I can go back to how I was before. There's not really a time. The, pro the, the issue that a lot of guys have is they will throw something in before they've really had time to assess whatever they were doing first. You know, so it's like I, I, I changed my dose and, oh, I'm feeling better. Oh, now let me take this thing. You know, you know, you don't know had you just stayed on your protocol for the next couple of weeks, would things have continued to improve? Would they've stabilized? Would things have gotten worse? You know, give it enough time, give it a good, you know, six, seven weeks to say, Hey, it's been six, seven weeks. I feel pretty steady. Now would be the time to, to, to try something else. Okay. Um, getting some kind of a pin over here, over the chat. Uh, sorry, I gotta go through. NT trade. I was on Sesta, 20 milligram every day for eight years. No, uh, no any other issue. Um, guys, I did make the big mistake uh, a year ago, even two years ago, um, when I had one doctor telling me that daily injections was like the way to go because you keep your levels steady and whatever else. Um, and that's kind of what happens when you just listen to one person and you don't listen to the feedback of multiple other people. Um, I've learned now that lower levels of H SHVG typically means you got to inject more frequently or need more frequent um, administration like cream uh, compared to higher SHVG where the guys sometimes report feeling better if they're only taking once a week or twice a week injections. So don't just necessarily hop onto daily saying, oh, if I hop on daily, it's gonna, I'm going to be more consistent. I know a lot of higher SHVG guys that went daily and they didn't feel nearly as good compared to doing, you know, two shots a week or one shot a week or whatever else. So um, there's no, there's no one rule fits all at all when it comes to the, when it comes to dosing. Um, 1135 test free. Oh, 1135 test free test 34. Doctor says too high free test. So she issued a Nastrozole one milligram a week, good or bad. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny, Ronan, because 
Your doctor said that your testosterone is too high, but then gives you an astrazole. And astrazole is to lower estrogen. So what the hell does, does they, do they think that giving you an astrazole is going to lower your testosterone? If anything, your testosterone is going to go up slightly. Um, 11.35 tests and a free test at 34. I mean, most of the guys that I know that are sim symptom-free are around that range. Um, so no idea, like, how were you feeling? Were you feeling good? And then she gave you an astrazole and you'd ask your doc, like, why would you give me a drug that's designed as an anti-cancer medication for women? Why would you give me this if I feel great now? Why would you now give me something that's going to maybe throw things off? Um, I would not take the anastrozole by any stretch of the imagination. I think someone would literally have to hold me down and put a gun to my head to give me an astrozole now that I know what it does. Uh, Guardian Angel, if someone was starved of TRT by their endo, could they at first need like 250 milligrams a week? But as time goes on, many months, eight, then it is too much and they need to drop down the dose. Someone starved, that means that the endo basically said, oh, uh, I need to test your baseline levels uh, guys, go on the YouTube channel. I did a video about that. It is the most, excuse my French, fucking ridiculous thing a human being, especially a doctor, could ever suggest to an individual to say, let us chemically castrate you to see what your natural levels are. When you stop taking your testosterone, your levels are going to tank. I don't know what they're expecting to see. Your baseline is going to be near zero at that point. It's going to take months and months and months for anything to start coming back. Why would they put you through that? It's, it's basically criminal medical malpractice. Um, if they now say, okay, well, now we've seen that you're low, yeah, uh, and we're going to give you TRT, uh, are there some doctors that might give a kind of a loading dose? You know, if you're really, 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 really low, the doctor might say, let's give you like a shot or two of like a much higher dose to bring your levels up and then we'll get you on a proper TRT dose. I have seen that happen, um, but they're basically trying to fix a problem that they caused to begin with, which is stupid. Um, I seriously, I see that stuff. I, Guardian Angel, I, I'm, I'm sad for you. I wish that you would have told your endo to basically shove it up his ass. Tell him, I'll tell you what, I'll tank my testosterone levels, but <clears throat> you got to tank yours also. Okay, we're going to do it together. We're going to do a little, you know, that's what I would do. There's no way he'd do it because he's not that stupid. Or maybe he is. Um, Jonathan Monteros Monterosa. Good morning, gentlemen. From Texas, new subscriber here. My question is, any difference in using generic version brand name, testosterone cypionate versus brand name such as Deep and Pfizer? Uh, not really. If you're using a, you know, if it's an actual pharmaceutical brand versus a, you know, UGL underground lab, then yeah, there's going to be a difference. If it's a compounded testosterone cypionate made by a compounding pharmacy, it's going to be virtually the same thing. So not really much difference there. Um, is it likely that something else is out of whack? That's for the, the guardian angel. Um, then it's too much and they need to drop down the dose. 250 milligrams a week, by the way, guardian angel, is, is a pretty high dose for most guys. That's what I'm on. That's what I need. But I'm of the minority. I'm a bit of an outlier. Um, that's typically a pretty high dose for most guys. So again, it depends. You're, you're only talking about what your dose is and if it needs to be brought down or not. You know, how are you feeling on 250? Do you feel fantastic? If you feel fantastic, you know, uh, and the rest of your blood health, lipids, uh, you know, hematocrit, everything is, is in order, don't change anything. If you feel like crap, you have to see where your labs are and try to figure out are you potentially taking too much, which could very well be the case. You might try lower. And, and the easiest thing to do, if you can't get labs counted, just say to yourself, okay, well, I feel this way. Let me lower it and see, do I feel better or worse? If I feel worse, well, then I know I need to say where I am, or maybe I need to go higher. If you feel better, well, you'll know that you were taking too much. It's really, it's really that simple. Um, Clint Granger just tipped $4.99. Thanks for these shows. You're welcome, Clint. Um, a, B, G, H. My HCG 250 IU three times per week. Sorry. My total is 40. Uh, A, B, G, H total is 40. So that's, I think you're talking about 40 in Nmol, I would imagine. Total is 40. So your total is 1152. So you're the guy, I think, that did the 
HCG 750. It was saying 753. Okay, got it. Hold on. Let me get it back to that. So they got to like read up and read down. Okay, so 250 IU three times a week with 80 milligrams of testosterone. And yeah, so ABGH, why are you taking the HCG? For what? Is it because your doctor is scared to death of testosterone? Say, so let's just give you a little bit of testosterone and let's ramp you up on HCG to boost up your natural production. Why doesn't he just give you testosterone? Uh, maybe you can write why you're taking the HCG. Uh, Mike, Mike, I've been using DECA 200 milligrams a week and my hair is falling out like crazy. Would Clomid 50 milligram help with that? Uh, why? Why would you take Clomid? <laughs> to do what? Uh, Clomid is basically a, an estrogen with an anti-estrogen and helps to simulate natural production. What, what possible reason do you think that's going to help with your hair falling out? Uh, hair falls out usually from spikes of DHT or other things. Uh, maybe your body just doesn't like the DECA. Um, you know, maybe that's something you want to maybe avoid. Um, I don't usually recommend people taking something that they get an obvious symptom and then try to find another drug or compound to, to, to counteract that symptom. Obviously your body is telling you something like, Hey, uh, I don't like the DECA. So maybe look into other stuff. If it's for pain relief or whatever else, you can try peptides. Um, maybe try lowering your dose of DECA, maybe find a dose of DECA that you say, Hey, I take this and my hair's not falling out and I feel better and whatever else. Um, but 200 milligram a week is not typically a therapeutic dose of DECA. It's a pretty high dose of DECA. I know plenty of guys doing great with even just 50 to hundred milligrams a week. Um, that's my advice there. Armish Singh, I have 300 nanogram per deciliter tests in two morning, in two morning tests, but always slightly higher than normal E2, normal prolactin. I'm 26 years old. Um, I have 30. Okay, so you're you're not on TRT, Armesh, um, and you've got three. You were tested for 300 total T. Um, 26 years old. Can I? Well, you got a bunch of other notes below. I have testes and adrenal. Whoops. Hold on a second. An adrenal gland ultrasound scheduled. Usually people have low E2 when they have low test, but mine's low test higher than normal. Arnesh, are you? Uh, sorry to ask, but are you? really overweight by any chance uh, because obese guys or very overweight guys are going to have more aromatase, which means more of the testosterone will convert into estradiol, which is kind of normal. Uh, and there could also be something else going on there. So if you want to answer that really quick, uh, are you uh, really overweight? Because that would explain it. Um, Mr. Said, Said MSC math, sir, I'm taking Clomid 50 milligram daily for hypogonadism. What should be dose of AI? because my estrogen is always about 70 and how long I feel better. Um, find a new doctor. Do not take Clomid for hypogonadism. Um, get on testosterone. Here, here's the thing, guys. When you're hypogonadal, what does it mean? It means that your body is not making enough testosterone, right? There's something wrong with your body that you're not making enough. So you have two options. You can say, I'm going to try to take some drugs to try to convince my body to do something better that it's not currently doing very well and try to trick it or try to, you know, make, make the factory that you know, the, the defective factory with the defective shitty workers, I'll try to like, you know, get out the whip and try to make them work harder. Or you could just take testosterone. Which one do you think is going to have the better results? I don't know why so many doctors are so afraid of testosterone. Uh, and, and just say, I, I don't want to give you this stuff because it's dangerous and, you're, and all these things. I'm going to try to make your shitty natural production better. Why? If the, if the natural production is crap, just take some testosterone and be done with it. Um, no, you don't take an AI. Do you know that Clomid is half estrogen and a, and, and a half estrogen blocker? And then you want to take <laughs> a, a, another estrogen blocker to b counteract the effects of the estrogen from the Clomid? Like, Find a new doctor. Uh, if you're in our Facebook group or if you're not, join the Facebook group. Go in the announcement section. I have a huge list of recommended providers. Go look for a better doctor. Dave Lee. Steven, you ever heard of a guy named Dave Lee? Yeah, sounds, he's Australian. Sounds fake. He? He's Australian. Sounds like one of those fake names. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, he says, if you were locked in a room full of spiders, would you rather have the lights on or off? Huh. 
That's a legit question. Because I, I don't like spiders. I'm kind of scared of spiders. It's like my stupid little fear. So if I, if I see the spiders, I'll be afraid. But then if I'm not seeing the spiders because it's dark, I'm not seeing the spiders. So I can be worrying about the spiders. But Dave, it's a very good question. It's a very good question. Um, could I at least have the opportunity to up my testosterone dose before going into the room with the spiders? And we're gonna, Dave, we're going to have to message each other about that after. That's a very good question. Uh, Robert Thompson, my face looks younger than men my age. Betet collagen, oh, I guess better collagen muscle tone. Um, Robert Thompson, are you on testosterone replacement therapy? I'm making the assumption here. You haven't really said why. Um, and yes, um, if you're on testosterone replacement therapy, typically you're going to have better skin, better muscle tone. That's kind of... Mm -hmm. Good genetics, of course. And good genetics uh, helps too. Um, Clint Granger, Dave Lee wins this round. <laughs> DMAC, hey guys, really appreciate your insight and advocacy for the TRT community. Daniel McGafferty. Um, Robert Thompson getting very good results with TRT and Burgle weight training method. Building muscle over 65, good job. Uh, hit also plenty of protein eat clean. Aaron Patton, how would you approach hot when starting in obese? Um, so there's a lot of doctors that are going to tell you if you're obese that you need to block your estrogen. And that is false. Just because you're obese doesn't mean you need to be blocking your estrogen any more than a guy who's slim. When you are obese, you will create more estradiol. Okay but it's not the estradiol that made you obese. It's the fact that you were obese that made it that you had more estradiol, okay? The estradiol becomes a innocent bystander here. The estradiol will actually help with metabolism. It'll help reducing your risk of diabetes. So it will help to improve metabolism of fat. So you want that estradiol there. You don't want to do anything to touch it. You're going to be a guy who's really going to need it. Cardiovascular disease, heart protection, all that type of stuff. Uh, you're not going to want to lower that by any stretch of the imagination, um, you're going to probably need maybe more testosterone because you're going to probably have a little bit more testosterone converting to estrogen. Um, but dose it the same. You're going to want to try to lose weight. So if, when you're getting on testosterone replacement therapy, don't just think, oh, I'm going to take this shot once or twice a week and uh, you know I'm going to look like Steven uh, in six months. No. You need to get off your ass. You need to change the way you eat. You're going to eat clean. You got to move. You got to do some exercise. And if you're doing everything, you will improve over time. It's a process. It's going to take some time. It's completely worth it. Um, carnivore. Hey, Danny, is there an optimum level for DHES? I'm currently at 2.96 UMOL. Um, there's not really an optimum level. Um, if you get your levels measured and you're deficient, then by all means you want to supplement. You know, just in the middle, in the middle, of the higher end of the of the clinical range is usually sufficient. Uh, no one's ever really recommending to like take a massive amounts of DHEA and get like way higher than the than the range. If you're at the top of the top, you know, middle, middle of the top of the range, you're usually fine. Um, so yeah, no real, no real uh, answer there. Uh, okay, just give me a sec because my screen just kind of scrolled and now I'm like way down the list. I got to find where I was before. Sorry, guys. Is a quarter inch needle okay for thigh or ventral gluteal? Quarter inch? Quarter inch? I've never even heard of a quarter inch needle. Um, the shortest I typically use will be a, it's a, a five eighths inch or half an inch uh i can't see how you're going to do any type of intramuscular with a quarter inch i mean even to do a sub q shot with a quarter inch that's i didn't even know quarter inch <laughs> syringes existed um i would definitely recommend trying to get a half inch uh just to make sure it gets it gets through um stoyan petkov advice for people with long refractory period i have normal free t estradiol and prolactin on 27 and struggle to perform even three to five hours after ejaculation. Previously, I could do it one hour after sex. Um, so normal prolactin, normal at the high end of the range, normal or mid-range normal. 
Um, there are things that you can try. T typically, the refractory period is, is often related to prolactin. Not always, but it's often related to it. You can take um, try taking uh, zinc. Uh, you can try taking vitamin E. You can try taking vitamin B6. These are all things that will actually help to reduce uh, prolactin. There's actually a form of vitamin B6 called, I think it's P5P, which works almost as well as cabergolin, which is the medication that doctors give to um, treat high levels of prolactin. You can get some P5P, let's say, at you know 50 milligrams a day. Um, and give that a couple weeks and see if it has any impact on a uh, refractory period. And if it does, you'll have your answer. Uh, but that could be from a number of, of reasons. Obviously, you know, also with age, you know, as you're getting older, you know, I could say, oh, when I was 18, I could have sex, you know, three times in an hour. And I can't do that now, regardless of my CRT and regardless of my prolactin. I'm going, I'm hitting 47 a little more time. So depends on what period you're, 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 you're comparing that to, but yeah, some of these things that you can uh, will lower P5P to lower prolactin is actually pretty potent. So uh, don't say I'll take that and take all this other stuff. Just one thing, and see what a impact that has over um, a little period of time, and you can go from there. Casper um, Brazka, election issues. I have a feeling you can mean erection issues. Erection issues on TRT, 150 milligrams a week, split into two injections, five milligram daily, Tadafil, and still losing erection erections during sex what do you think could be the issue um so i don't know what your total and free testosterone levels are on the 150 milligrams split into two weekly injections i don't really know if the two weekly injections is an ideal uh, protocol for you you know if you've got really really low H shbg maybe you need more frequent um you know, the five milligram daily works for most guys, you know, but again, are, do you have great libido, but the erections are kind of like, eh, you know, uh, then you could maybe try bumping up the, uh, the Cialis to 10 milligram a day and see what that does. Uh, if you've got crap libido, well, there's no amount of Cialis is going to give you libido. The Cialis will eventually make you go like this, um, but it's not going to give you libido. So that's, uh, you have to figure that one out there. John OG, I can't use finasteride alone, but I've heard when on TRT finasteride has far less side effects. Have you heard that? I will be starting TRT soon. Um, are you, John, are you currently taking finasteride? Um, I'm, or is that like you're, you're saying I'm going to start TRT and then I'm going to take finasteride at the same time? Uh, um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, personally, I hate the stuff. Uh, if you know, people are saying, "Oh, because of my hair, my hair." I had the most wonderful hair you'd ever see. It was thick and it was black and it was gorgeous and it was lustrous. And I thought that the hair made me. And eventually, my hair started thinning. And eventually, I started shaving my head because you know what? It's really not the end of the world. It's just not. It's it's just it's. it's it's hair. I, I'm not going to take some drug to make me sick just to keep my hair. I couldn't give a shit. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm not sure if you're on it now or you're planning on taking it if you start TRT. Uh, if you're taking it now and you're having side effects, you have to say to yourself, are these side effects really, <laughs> really worthwhile to maintain the hair on my head? You know, is it really worth feeling like shit to mm -hmm. keep hair on my head? I don't think hair is really that <laughs> useful to feel like shit. I think I'd rather feel really good and not have any hair personally. Um, but that's just me. Um, Dylan Jacobs is insensitivity, something attributed to too high a dose free T3, free T43 or something that only HCG will ameliorate. I've since lowered dose from 200 to 160, only one weekend to see if that helps. Um, it means that if I'm around there, none of those issues exist. And that's when I know I'm dialed in. Um, there are some guys that have tried low doses, high doses, medium doses, uh, whatever the case. And that, that issue persists. And by adding even just a little bit of HCG a week, you know, 250, 300 IU, like twice a week, uh, two to three times a week, for them has made a world of difference. I can't take the stuff I feel like garbage on the stuff. Um, so 
that's a it depends um you know you dropped it down free t of 43 a free t of 43 i mean it's a lot of guys sit there but for some guys that's too much uh you've dropped it down to 160 so you know in your only one weekend give it a couple weeks if you start saying like hey a little bit more sensitivity showing up you'll have your answer uh if it's gotten worse you can always try taking more tests but yeah, teeth free t of 43 maybe not so much you can maybe see if you can experiment with some HCG just to see what difference that makes. Uh, that's a, it depends. There's no real um, right answer for this one. Uh, Steve, no question. Just saying hello and thanks. Steve, seriously, dude. I'm just kidding. Thanks, Steve. Um, hello back. Uh, Mike, Mike, doctor has me on 200 milligram DECA. My hair is falling out and getting acne. He prescribed me Clomid 50 milligram to help with that. It sounds right. I think I answered you up above. Um, yeah, you don't take Clomid to stop acne and to stop acne and hair falling out. So I don't know what what do your doctor is thinking here. Like, I think you need a new doc, Mike. Um, I think you need to back off on the Deca. Uh, if I take 200 milligrams of DECA, I get acne. So um, try backing off on the DECA or ask yourself why you're taking the DECA at all. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the Clomid, no. Dave Lee, who would win in a bare knuckle boxing match between Dr. Stephen Devos and Dr. Jeffrey Rutterbush? <laughs> well, so Stephen's younger, Jeffrey's older. Jeffrey's a fucking savage. Steven's a really nice guy. Steven's a polite Belgian. Jeff was in the military. I never boxed, and but my grandfather was ever Belgian champion boxing. Ooh. Long ago. So I might have good genetics, but I have never tested it out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to give it to Rudderbush. I'm afraid so. <laughs> yeah, and Rudderbush is a lot taller bigger military training he's got a, he's got a few a few advantages uh so it you know but he is older so we don't know what his conditioning is like he's very muscular um you know so if he's chasing steven around steven's and you know probably got a lot better cardio if uh you know jeffrey gets winded after a couple of minutes of trying to hit steven and missing steven can do but steven's so polite he's just gonna like hold him down and say do you give up just so you give up well, just, let's not let's just be friends and let's do a training session together, okay? I win, you lose. No, you know what? You win. I mean, you're going you're gonna to find some way. We're all winners here. Um, that's my question. That's my answer, Dave Lee. I'm still wondering who this Dave Lee guy is. He sounds like a fucking weirdo. Um, <laughs> Carnivore, thanks for your time, fellas. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to go down, go down, go down, go down. He said to you, just the HCG to keep my fertility. Um, that's the ABGH. Okay, you're the guy on the, uh, was it 250 or 350 milligram a week? So, yeah. Um, I'd probably, I'd probably increase the ABGH, I would, I would back off on the HCG a touch and I would increase testosterone a bit. Um, and I think that might help balance stuff out. That's my answer. Um, Arna saying no, 15% oh, 15 body fat. And you're the guy that had the high, higher levels of estrogen with low. Um, so it depends when you've when you're when you've got an uh, androgen deficiency like that. There's all kinds of weird stuff can happen. It's not necessarily always due to being obese and whatever else. Um, it could actually be a number of things: poor liver metabolism. It could be. It's hard to say. Uh, you are definitely deficient. So at least you've got that figured out. Uh, you're going to be starting TRT hopefully. I would say bring up your androgen levels and then and then see how you feel and go from there. Um, You'd be amazed at how much stuff, how much the rest of the hormones can all get balanced out once you've once you fix that issue. Uh, John Bennett, Bennett, uh, one pump, five grams of Tren a week. I cannot get out of bed to train. 
and I stink of cat piss, please help. <laughs> huh. One pump, a pump of five grams. Five grams of trend. Hmm. Well, John, don't know who you are either. Um, but uh, if you're stinking a cat piss, I'd probably say maybe get rid of some of the cats um, and uh, maybe stop taking the trend. Derek Anderson, thumbs up. Uh, Arnesh Singh, I'm 50 percent body fat. I train weights five times a week. I have 300 higher than yeah. So Arnesh, hop on the hop on TRT, bring those levels up, and hopefully that's going to fix stuff. This is from two months apart blood test. Doctor scheduled ultrasound to find where my height is coming from. I have puberty gyno. Um, yeah, I. So Arnesh, here's the thing. Even if they <laughs> They they do an uh, you know an, an ultrasound of your nuts and they like oh he's got a problem like it, it, this is just wasting time at this point if you're measurably low if I was a doctor I'd say hey you're measurably low your body isn't doing something let's just ch check to see is there any obvious reason why you're you know is do you have like a huge deficiency of something or whatever else you know let's fix that and see what it does but I'm not gonna sell, start ultrasounding your your nuts like I I, I just wouldn't waste that kind of time. Um, so anyways, Dave Lee, good laugh. Much to love to you both. Um, guy, by, guys, by the way, I'm making fun of Dave Lee cause he's trolling me, but, uh, check out his Facebook group called advanced fundamental training. The guy's brilliant. Uh, he's in Australia. Uh, he's a coach on a number of different things. I've sent family and friends to him. The guy's wonderful, really knows the shit. Um, he's also an admin in the TRT in Australia Facebook group. So go check him out. And then please definitely troll him on my my behalf. That'd be wonderful. Uh, Starsky 182, is HCG really required to maintain fertility 500 IU three times a week? Well, if you're not taking HCG, your, testo your testicles are going to shut down. Uh, are you going to, are you sterile? Not necessarily. There's plenty of guys that never took HCG, uh, you know, and still got their wives or girlfriends pregnant. So there's no guarantee but if you want to do something to ensure that it's maintained, then HCG is kind of uh, an essential there. Uh, 500 IU three times a week is a pretty decent dose for fertility. I'd be very surprised if you're on TRT taking 500 IU um, of HCG three times a week, that you're not going to have some kind of fertility to get your job done. Um, you know, go get the sperm count checked. But uh, I was on TRT for a number of years. I got on... 500 IU twice a week, and I was able to get the job done. I've got a 19, 20-month-old uh, now, believe it or not. Um, Nuno Faria, hi there. For cognitive improvement, anything else besides Hooper's in A having fun? Uh, Nuno, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with the stuff. Um, I've had significant cognitive improvement simply by taking testosterone, so I've never really had to go anything beyond that. I'm not familiar with that drug, so I couldn't really tell you. Sorry, I couldn't answer that one. Uh, there are some guys that are seeing cognitive improvement taking uh, pregnenolone, um, even some just taking DHEA. You can try pregnenolone, start very low, even just five milligrams a day. Do that for a while. You can bump to 10, bump to 15. And if you're finding benefit, you can up that slowly. Uh, don't take 50 all at once, because if you're like me, in three days, you will not be able to get hard if the fate of the world depended on it. So that may be one thing you try. Is there a need for an AI if you're blasting? <sighs> I know guys that are have blasted heavily, even up to a gram and a half a week of testosterone and taking only testosterone without taking anything else because they get amazing results with testosterone and feel great with testosterone, have not had to take an AI. Uh, if you're taking stuff like D-ball and whatever else, then... All bets are off. D-ball does not convert to estradiol. It'll convert to synthetic versions of estrogens. Um, so yeah. Testosterone only. I don't really see anybody needing an AI or not really anybody needing an AI, but it's extremely rare that anybody would need an AI taking testosterone only. Uh, Justin Kao, do you monitor, monitor ferritin with your routine blood labs? Any other labs you monitor besides T? Um, hopefully, you're not dealing with a doctor that is only measuring testosterone. 
because there's a number of things you should check, you know, total testosterone, free testosterone. Uh, there's some people that do testosterone just to make sure they don't have a deficiency. Uh, SHBG, you can do a thyroid panel, you know, TSH, free T3, free T4, uh, lipids, uh, hematocrit, hemoglobin, platelets. You can do PSA, uh, test your DHEA levels. You can test stuff like vitamin D, uh, vitamin B12. Um, so yeah, you know, prolactin, um, just right off the top of my head, you know, just, you know, RBC, you know, just overall blood health to make sure there's nothing, there's nothing off. Um, and the ferritin, you know, guys getting ferritin deficiencies are the ones that, you know, their, their hematocrit gets a little, you know, a little, little bit elevated and their doctors freak out because they don't know anything and they tell them they got to donate blood and they're donating blood all the time and they wind up with a ferritin deficiency. That's just stupid. Um, so anyways, as long as you're not donating blood all the time, uh, you usually won't have a ferritin deficiency. Um, so um, Arnesh Singh, what can be the reason I always have higher than normally to with low test? I thought I read that one already. Yeah, I think that's like a double double post. Marco Spagnuolo, do you know any clinic that could prescribe HGH in Italy? Oh, povera te. I have single digit level of GH and IGF-1. Uh, Marco, um, I don't know any clinics in Italy. I have spoken to, a, 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 I'm a fellow Italian, by the way, my parents were born in Calabria, Southern Italy. Um, I was in Italy uh, just a couple of years ago, went to uh, Rome and uh, Malfi Coast was beautiful. Uh, but I do not know any clinics in Italy, unfortunately. And the guys I've spoken to from Italy uh, have had a very, very uh, hard time finding anybody to help them out. So can't really help you there. Anabolic patient, Arnesh, your story seems similar to mine. It's genetic. You will need TRT. Read B, thoughts on men taking progesterone to increase allopregnolone for libido. Um, I do not recommend taking progesterone for men. You can take pregnenolone to try to increase allopregnolone. And, and even then it's not, you know, if you, if you're just a natty guy, I mean, are you, where are your testosterone levels? Where are your DHT levels? Where are, I mean, just taking, first of all, there's, I, I haven't really found that many guys that have taken progesterone and that's actually improved your libido. It's, it's, that's kind of a rare circumstance. Um, I'd much prefer taking pregnenolone versus progesterone. Uh, again, starting off very low, bumping it up slowly from there. Uh, progesterone is great, let's say, for guys that have maybe, you know, have had a traumatic brain injury and whatever else. Uh, a little bit of progesterone there can go a long way, but the typical guy on TRT, not so much, unless you have some weird thing going on. I know Dave Lee, who's been trolling the, uh, the live stream here, he uses progesterone sometimes, uh, recommends it to guys for very specific circumstances. Um, but when I'm thinking, oh, I need to increase my libido, progesterone is probably the bottom of my list uh, on that one. Um, oh, Robert Martin, it's half inch. Yes, half inch uh, for ventral glute. Yes, I use, I use uh, five eighths inch, uh, five, five eighth inch, which is almost half inch. And, uh, you know, as you can see, I'm, you know, pretty lean. Uh, that usually gets the job done for me. Um, Riggs, what's the highest TRT dose you've seen? Um, the highest TRT dose, I have a couple of physician friends who have needed to prescribe as high as 400 milligrams a week to a patient to get symptom resolution. Um, that even at 350, the patient was a disaster. Uh, and it got to at 400 of patients, like I, I finally feel okay. Uh, and these aren't patients that are, you know, saying I want to get a legal, uh, testosterone cycle. These are patients that would like l legit issues that aren't even training and whatever. Um, there is one guy I know who grew up, spent most of his life, uh, with exposure to pesticides. He need, needs to take a really, 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 really high dose of testosterone his total T is somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000. It's the only level where he has any semblance of, of normalcy. 
uh, anything below that. And he's got every single symptom known to man just because his body has basically been poisoned. Um, so don't judge guys needing higher levels of testosterone or needing you know, bigger dose because you don't know what's going on inside their bodies. Dose is irrelevant. Um, I do have, okay. Scott, 999. Thanks for the tip, Scott. Here are a lot of differing opinions on needle size for ventral glute injection for average size guys, not buff like Gil. Half inch versus five eighths versus one. Thanks for all you guys do. Okay, so, you know, there's very, very, very little difference between a half inch needle and a five eighths inch needle. I used five H, but, you know, there's, you're talking about a one eighth of an of a inch difference in length there. Um, I do ventral gluteal shots myself. And I've been using a half inch needle and I get the job done. Um, could I use a one inch? Sure. Um, I am, I do not suspect by any stretch of the imagination that when I'm going ventral glute, that I'm not getting it deep enough into the muscle to, to get the job done. Um, so yeah, it's usually fine. It really is usually fine. Uh, Robert Tom Mario Arnesh now 26 want to go to hospital for gyno surgery the doctor ordered the blood test and they found this high E2 low test thing okay uh, and Arnesh by the way the high E2 low test it's most likely the low testosterone they gave you the gyno uh, I know that because I got gyno from low testosterone and now that my testosterone has gone up as well as the estradiol the gyno is like way better um, so I don't know, how, Arnesh, how bad your gyno was, uh, but if it wasn't too bad, I probably would have suggested get on TRT for a little while and see if that improves, because there was a time that I thought about getting surgery for gyno before I started TRT, and now, I mean, there's just, just I mean, I, it's, it's, it's pretty much gone. Uh, so no need for surgery for me. Uh, portal reviews. I know this is a newbie question, but how do you tell you're dialed in? You t can tell you're dialed in when you feel pretty much the same every day. You're not having ups and downs. Your sleep has improved. Your libido has improved. Your erection quality has improved. Your cognition, your brain state has improved. You've got better energy. You find yourself losing a little bit of body fat. You find yourself maybe adding a little bit more muscle mass than you're used to if you're training. Um, and if you've got all those things going on, I mean, you're dialed in. Whatever you're doing is, is working for you, okay? Um, for me, dialed in basically means having a lack of symptoms, okay? If you still have symptoms... It means that maybe your protocol needs a little bit of work, or maybe it just means that testosterone wasn't necessarily the issue causing these symptoms and you need to look at something else. But when you're at the point when you're just symptom free, you're dialed in. So like if I use myself as an example right now, I have no symptoms. There's no issues that I'm having right now that I feel like I need to adjust my protocol. Everything just works. Um, the only downside to what I'm doing is I get a little bit more acne. Uh, I get acne on my back a little bit more, my shoulders. Sometimes I get like, I get stuff like this on my arms every now and then, or I'll get like little dots on my head every now and then. Um, especially when it's not summertime and I'm outside, if I'm outside in the sun, I don't get it. But when it starts, like I, I live in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and like, it's, it's dark at like 20 after four, I'm not getting any sun. So when I'm not getting in sun, I get a little more acne, but that's really my only my only symptom, everything else works really, really well. So that's what, for me, what dialed in would mean. Um, hold on, it just kind of scrolled here. CTK bullies. 100 milligram of exercises a week, now starting third month and not seeing much change. I'm 6'4", 300 pounds, working out four to five days a week, plus all my vitamins, nothing else. Uh Ziosted. I've heard of that before. You're going to have to forgive me. i got to look that up. What is that? Testosterone injection. It's enanthate. 75 milligram. Um, so uh, CTK bullies, 100 milligrams a week is typically not enough for most guys. Um, 
you may need a dose increase, but I don't know what your labs or whatever else, but if you're taking 100 milligrams a week and you've, it's three months in and you're not noticing anything, um, and you're working out four to five days a week and whatever else, ask your doctor if you can bump it up. Uh, I started off at 100 milligrams a week and nothing was happening. And then they were bumping me up to like 110 and 120 and nothing was happening. And I said, hey, can I try like something higher? Put me on 200. Let's see if at least it does something. And if it, if it does, great. And then we can always lower it after. But I would probably ask your doctor to bump that up to 150. Uh, 100 milligrams for most guys is typically not enough. Um, Yuchu BB. Someone on a forum said, R-E-T-R-T, -E you need less sub-Q than I am for the same result. I don't know his source for this, and I doubt it's true. Do you have any input? Um, if you look at the literature, the literature says that sub-Q and I am are virtually identical. The problem is that in reality, uh, couldn't be further from the truth. I have known guys that have tried doing I am and sub-Q, and they do their labs, and their labs are the same. I know some guys have done sub-Q and I am, and they've had higher levels with sub-Q and lower levels with I am, and others have had higher levels with I am, whatever else. Um, so there, it, it's, for some reason in these studies, it says it's the same, but everything that I've seen says it's very, very different. Um, right now, with everything that I've learned and the experience I've accumulated, I recommend intramuscular uh, 10 times out of 10 instead of sub-Q. Anybody having any issues with absorption, whatever else, I would definitely say do intramuscular. Uh, that's the gold standard. Um, I don't really recommend sub-Q anymore. So, uh, Robert Thomas is getting good results from rat packs. Okay, a few vials a day. Mario Mariano Faria, may clomiphene help non-hypogonadomen to increase testosterone baseline and improve body composition and libido. Uh, again, Mariano, uh, lots of doctors out there trying to stimulate natural production when your natural production is crap. Um, but that drug, clomiphene, comes with a whole bunch of side effects. Why not just take testosterone? Why not just put back what your body needs to thrive as a man and be done with it? Okay. Uh, I would much, much, much prefer just getting on testosterone than getting on clomid. Have I seen some guys take clomid and do well? Yes. Um, most guys I know that have taken Clomid, it's because their doctors were scared of testosterone. So they say, let's put you on Clomid and see how this works. And then after a year or two of that not working, then they can cover their ass and say, oh, you know, I've tried everything I could to fix this guy by boosting his natural levels and I couldn't. So now I have no choice but to put him on testosterone. Um, find a doctor who can just put you on testosterone and be done with it. Uh, especially Mariano, you're at 40 years old. Uh, I have a feeling you're childbearing, not childbearing, but your 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 child days are potentially over uh maybe fertility's not an issue um uh, i do that uh carnivore on sustenon 200 milligram per week puts me at 800 total 18 free 9.7 ACE between prolactin 387 using vitamin b6 i feel okay but no libido any suggestions 200 800 total 18 free Okay, so your carnivore, are you doing this once a week? Your SHBG is really low. Um, I would probably suggest, uh, okay, hold on a second, prolactin, prolactin. Hold on a second, I got to convert this. UM, oh, I don't know this value. UML. Or is it not UGL? 37 ML is 16. Okay, so your prolactin is a little higher than the range, but not entire, but your SHG is really, really low. If you're taking the 200 milligrams of Cestanon all at once, um, I'm assuming here you're taking it weekly and you're measuring at the end of the week 18 free. See if there's any way that you can split that up into two shots. Um, that will keep you from tanking by the end of the week. It'll probably bring your free testosterone levels up. It'll probably keep you a little bit more consistent, and then you can see when, when it comes to libido. Um, vitamin B6, don't take too much. Um, even 300 milligrams a day is more than sufficient. Uh, you can also, I was saying at the beginning of the video, you can use something called P5P, 
which is a more bioavailable version of uh, B6. You can take 50 milligrams of that a day. That's great for lowering prolactin. Um, I don't know if you're taking any other supplements. Sometimes people just say, oh, I'm taking this, 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 and they, they fail to, to, to state all the other stuff that they're potentially taking. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say, see if you can split up your uh, sustenance shot into two 100 milligram a week injections. Uh, Paul, Paul, I'm on TRT sustenance 250, 10 N day, and midshimocrit is 52. How can I lower it? I'm on TRT sustenance 250, 10 N day. Every Paul, Paul, days, uh, every 10 days? Probably. And my hematocrit is 52. Uh, Paul, a 52 hematocrit is not typically an issue if you're in good health. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Your doctor might be freaking out over 52 hematocrit. 52 hematocrit for the guys that know about hematocrit is kind of a non-issue. So if you're feeling good and you're healthy and you're exercising, eating well, um, and your hematocrit's at 52, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, so... Uh, Nunu, you're welcome. Um, hold on, my whole screen. Sometimes the whole the whole chat kind of just goes boom, and then I gotta go back and and find where I was. Sorry about that. And Stephen, I'm not looking at the time, so you you say when, right? Uh, now we're on eight minutes now. One TRT, thanks. Um. Is it necessary to use HCG? Is it possible to combine with DECA? I use DECA 100 milligrams per week. Uh, HCG you use if you really need fertility. Um, if you don't need fertility, why bother? Mullum, I don't think given your the look of you that you are still trying to have kids, I'd probably ditch the HCG personally. Um, if you don't need to be fertile, I don't even bother with it. Um, Riggs, does test sip expire? My bottle says expired October 2020. Uh, pharmaceutical companies are going to put an, an expiry date on stuff um, October 2020, and we're December. I wouldn't really wouldn't worry about it. You could pro you could probably uh, still use it uh, for another couple months, and not really it's not really going to be a concern, you know. I wouldn't use a bottle that expired in 2020 and use it in 2025. Uh, but if it's like a few months past expiration, it's really no big deal. Uh, Robert Martin, going to have to dig deep on your Italian pharmacy knowledge. Uh, how are you finding the right spot on ventral glutes? I saw Jill's ability, but another perspective would be helpful. So um, ventral glute is a really tricky spot to find. Um, if you look at Gil's video, he shows how to do it. Um, I'm noticing that I can be, I don't necessarily have to go directly into that spot. I can even go around it. So basically all I do is right here, there's a, there's a muscle, right? That if I lift my leg, it's going to flex. Okay. There's a lot of meat everywhere around here. Okay. So pretty much anywhere in this, you know, anywhere here, I've injected myself. There's a there's one part that's there's like a bone right under it so that you're not going to go there like if you put your finger here you're going to feel a bone but anything above uh, especially if you're only using a half inch needle five eighths is fine or anything a little bit towards the, the the rear is fine but I've I've injected pretty much everything around here uh, rarely having any kind of issue um, so yes I did try at first to find that specific spot for ventral gluteal um, but yeah I've been you can just, I, I just call it hip shots. I'm just giving myself an injection of the hip. Uh, I take every other day shots. So on, you know, one day I'll do the right side, another day the left side, but the spot is always kind of varying a little bit. Um, Mullem, sleeping problem, is it a sign of not optimized? Mullem, if you have too low testosterone, it can affect sleep. You can have too high testosterone, it can affect sleep. You could also have totally normal levels of testosterone and your sleep is crap. If your levels are great and your sleep is crap, maybe it's not necessarily the testosterone that's causing sleep issues. It could be stress. It could be a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so it's not necessarily 
the testosterone. Of course, if you're taking a really, really high dose of testosterone and you're having problems sleeping, you can try lower it. If your sleep improves, you just answered. Um, Dr. Stephen Devils showed a formula of his testo cream on YouTube. Can I go to a GP and ask the GP to send that formula to a local compounding pharmacy so I can get the cream locally in my country in Asia? Compounded testosterone cream in Asia. I don't know. Um, see if you want to explain what your cream is. I know what it is, but the question was towards you. Well, it's a 10 to 20% micronized testosterone in, um, yeah, in a kind of versa base or um, a base that is suited for transdermal uh, absorption. So I guess you best uh, email them the formula and ask uh, before you, your doctor sends over the prescription. And yeah. Asia is a big continent. So I guess in some countries <laughs> it will be available and in others not so much. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Bob, I haven't heard anyone talk about this. I discovered I had low T because I went to urologist because I was diagnosed as having Pyrenees disease. And a doc said a lot of such guys also have low T. True. Um, I have heard that a couple of times. Is it true or not? I'm not sure, but it is something I've heard. Um, I, I don't know enough about that particular disease to, to really uh, answer. Um, I'd actually prefer not to answer because I don't know enough about it. I want to give the wrong answer. Um, so yeah, speak with your speak with your doctor. Uh, maybe do a little research on that one. Sorry, I don't have the answer to that. Maybe ask in our Facebook group and uh, yeah. Dr. Jordan Grant there. Yeah. Um, yes, if you want to do that, well. I don't know if, how much Jordan's going to know about Pyrenees disease. I don't know if it's a, if a, it's a prostate or urology related thing, but anyways, join the Facebook group and post make a post there for sure. Um, a carnivore, he says twice a week. Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to go up and read a little higher. Uh, there's so many posts. It was the one with Susten on 200 milligrams uh, a week, and you recommended doing it uh, twice, and he already does it. And he's more. already doing it twice, and he's doing the Susten on. Yeah. Um, carnivore. That's gonna. That's really gonna depend. I'd have to. I'd have to know a lot more. Um, if you can, uh, if you've got a Facebook account and join the Facebook group, same name as the YouTube channel, TRT and Hormone Optimization, make a post over there and tag me in it and leave a little bit more uh, more details because um, I'd have to kind of go up and remember what everything you said. Carpe Diem, getting hot flashes, quite a bit similar to niacin effects, taking 200 milligram per week, CJC, 12.95, Ipamorel, and DHA, Pregnolone, thoughts? Um... So you're taking a bunch of stuff. I don't know how much of the DHA and pregnolone. Carpe diem, do you recall what you added at one point that then started creating the hot flashes? Because now you're just, you're taking a whole bunch of stuff and you're getting some kind of a symptom and you don't know what it is, right? So that's why I always recommend people starting off with one thing, do that for a little while and say, okay, this is good. Then let me add something else. Let me do that for a little while. But now there's a bunch of things going on here. Um, you know, you could maybe do process of elimination and say, um, you know, again, the 200 milligrams a week, I don't know what your free T levels and total T levels are. Maybe they're astronomical. Who the hell knows? Um, if they're not crazy high, you can say, well, you know what? Let me stop taking the DHA and pregnolone for a little while and see if the hot flashes go away. If they don't, okay, well, it wasn't that. Let me put those back in. You know, let me try something else. Um, so I don't really have a, a definite answer there. Um Max Gill, why do I always get lumps from my site injections in my shoulders? It's aesthetically noticeable. Um, Max Gill, uh, it's really, really important. I don't know if you're doing this or not because you didn't specify, but it's really important when you give a, an injection, if you're getting stuff like that, to really thoroughly massage the area when you're right after the injection. Um, even when I'm doing ventral gluteal, like I like really take my thumb and I rub and I rub and I rub and I'm just kind of spreading the oil around. So it's not all clumped up in one spot. So if you're doing the, the delt when you're done, 
put your arm on something where it's like loose or on, you know, just let it hang and really take your fingers and massage it in to spread it out. And you might wind up with less of that lump. A lot of guys just give the injection, boom, and they go, and then it makes a lump. So, um, Robert, uh, vegetables, tricks by Okay, you're welcome, uh, Robert Martin. Do you get scar tissue issues from years of injecting? Um, if you are using a larger needle and you're doing daily shots always in the same spot over and over and over and over and over, we get some scar tissue after a while, probably. Uh, I use a very, very, very small needle. I use 27 gauge, half inch, and I really uh, will go in different areas. Is that going to cause any scar tissue over time? I, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. There's so many different places you can inject. So try to use as many different as spots as possible just to avoid that potential thing from happening. Is pregnenolone HCG? No. Any reason to take that? And DHGA if fertility is not needed. D okay. Who? Carpe diem. Okay. Pregnenolone and HCG are two completely different things. They are two absolutely completely different things. And DHGA... Um, for fertility, the issue has no nothing to do with fertility at all. Okay, fertility is HCG. Uh, I would suggest go on Google and type hormone cascade chart, and you can see how cholesterol goes down into all the different things to pregnenolone to DHEA and, and so on and so forth. And you can see the pathway. Mm -hmm. um, for fertility, it's HCG. Pregnenolone and DHEA have totally different effects. Um, MJT started an astrozole quarter milligram yesterday, going to take it once a week. What difference or changes can I expect to see? Uh, you can expect to see it harming your health, MJT. Uh, I have no idea why you're taking an astrozole. I have no idea why your doctor would be giving you an astrozole. Uh, if your doctor is giving to it, he thinks estrogen is a bad thing. Uh, estradiol is basically providing half the benefits you're after on TRT. Uh, if he's giving that to you, your doctor is lost. End of story. He's absolutely lost. Uh, I would not take the anastrozole. Maybe find another doctor that knows this better. Uh, again, in our Facebook group, in the announcement section, there's a number of an, uh, a huge list of providers uh, that I listed there that are wonderful. A lot of them do telemed. So if you're in the U.S., there's a, there's a ton of options there. But yeah, uh, get off that anastrozole pretty, pretty please. Um, 10 minutes more and we wrap up. Yes. Okay, Clint Granger, Jimmy, okay, Robert Martin, Wax, uh, Guardian Angel, did you ever have that AI podcast with Sam Ridgeway? I did. If you go on the Live Like a Viking uh, YouTube channel, uh, I had a debate with Sam. Well, Sam Ridgeway was basically the moderator, and I debated his uh, clinician, uh, Chris Neal. Um, his replay of his video did not even have you on. He used your name picture to promote his video about AI. I just thought you should know. Uh, okay, I'll have to go look that up. I know that the, the, the actual debate is on his channel. Uh, didn't know that he used a picture, whatever. Um, is it on his YouTube channel? Is it on his Facebook page? Is it uh, on his website? Uh, I'd have to go look. Um, as much as, I, guys, as much as I... I I don't agree with his perspective on a lot of things. Um, we actually talked a little bit before the live stream and we emailed and stuff. He's actually a really nice guy. I think he means well, and maybe with a little bit of time, they're all going to get caught up just like everyone else did. Uh, but nice guy. Um, will TRT shrink testicles over time? Yes. Your testicles are a certain size because they're doing something. And if you're taking testosterone, well, now they don't have to do that thing anymore. And when they're not doing that thing anymore, they're going to shrink a little bit. Some guys shrink just a little, little bit, and some guys shrink a lot. All different with me. Mine shrunk a little, little bit. Um, was really no big deal. Um, okay, so we're going to the last question here. Kevin87 started 100 milligrams every five days of test sip. Six weeks ago, Doc wants to do bloods mid-December for just test value. Should I ask for a complete panel? If your doctor is testing only testosterone and nothing else, find a new doctor. Um, 
why why test just testosterone? What about everything else? What if your hematocrit is 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 hitting sixty? What if your lipids are a mess? What if, I mean, the, no, you don't just test testosterone. Uh, it, it's like it's like taking your car in for a maintenance and they check the air pressure of the passenger side rear tire and like, oh, tire pressure here is fine. Okay, you're good. You can take off. Like there's there's shit to check. Okay, you just should check your oil. They should check fluids. They should check. Uh, you know, there's things to check. There's a reason. It's the same thing when you go for labs. There's a number of things you want to check. Okay, don't just check, oh, my testosterone is fine. I must be fine. No, check the whole gamut of stuff. Um, and that's it. Uh, MGT really, really fast. 83 PG with a total T at 1204 is, by the way, 1204 is NG and not PG. 80, a, a, a total testosterone of 1200 with an estradiol of 83. That's, no, that's not high. That's normal. That's not, that's a non-concern. Don't even worry about that. Okay. Don't even worry about it. Don't touch it. Keep your serum level stable that you feel good. Find the frequency dose you feel good. And don't even worry about the estradiol. If you're worrying about the estradiol, stop measuring it. If you don't have a number on the piece of paper, well, now you got nothing to worry about. Okay. Easy fix. Okay, Danny. I guess you uh, helped a lot of men out there. So once again, everyone, come and join us in the Facebook group, TRT and Hormone Optimization. We have a backup uh, group forum on MiWi now because uh, Facebook is threatening us to close the group down because the word cycle or testosterone or whatever is yeah. used uh, once in a while. And we can't do anything about that. They even flag us uh, for all posts that we can't remove yeah. anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame, but whatever. I think uh, soon everyone's going to get f sick of Facebook with this, yeah. uh, what's going on, and they just gonna move to, anyway, so. they're going to move on to the other, other stuff. Yeah. So. Well, thanks for your time, Danny. Thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, see you in the next one. Okay. okay. Have a good one, guys.